time. With every new update, I always try to update my class setups and bring you guys something different with every new season. And the class setup that I'm about to share with you guys for the M4 is going to be the max damage M4. You can literally get a two shot kill with it. All right, so for the first attachment, we are going to be going with the monolithic suppressor. So this one's going to give us that sound suppression and being stealthy as possible is very important, especially when we only have 10 rounds to work with. We want to be able to pick and choose our gunfights. We do not want the enemies rushing us at all. And also that damage range does increase that two shot kill from that 35 meter range to 38 meters. Nonetheless, it's still nice because it gives you a two for one. All right. So for the next attachment, we are going to be going with the Cronin LP945 mini reflex. This one is optional. You don't need to use a reflex if you don't want to. However, I do highly recommend one because when you're only rocking with 10 rounds per magazine, you definitely need to hit all of your shots. If you don't hit all of your shots and you're not precise, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So that's another thing that you got to keep in mind when you're using this class setup. All right. So for the next attachment, we're actually going to be using a perk and we're going to be using fully loaded. So when you only have 10 rounds to work with and you're getting into a lot of engagements, since we're not using the traditional 5-5 six rounds you are unlikely going to find that laying around in multiplayer matches and that's the main reason why we're running with fully loaded so that we can keep continuing with the next gunfight and not really worry too much about running out of ammo okay and for the next attachment we're going with the stippled grip tape this one's going to increase our aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed so we are going to need this because that monolithic suppressor does decrease the aim down sight speed by just a bit and adding this attachment is going to mitigate those negatives and also at the same time we do need a little bit of speed on our side since I am recommending this class setup to be used on smaller to medium sized maps and when that happens you're most likely going to engage in close quarter combat and you need to be able to pull up your gun as fast as you possibly can all right so for the last and final attachment so we're going to get a little analytical here with some data because I know some people are going to doubt that hey this is not a two shot kill I like to test out my weapons before I go ahead and present it to you guys I really like looking at numbers and you know when you look at numbers and how how these weapons perform based on their stats that will tell you a story of how the gun can be used and how you can optimize it in game so one thing that i do need to clarify is that again before stopping power rounds it's a two shot kill to the head and three shot kill to the body but as soon as you put on those stopping power rounds it's going to be a two shot kill to the head and the body and it doesn't matter what range you're at it's going to be infinite range two shot kill which is what makes this m4 a high damage profile weapon all right so there are other key components to this class setup that you need to know about as well such as the perks so for perk number one i'm using the quick fix perk because mainly when you are engaging in gunfights and you only have 10 bullets to work with after you get a kill you're most likely going to be hurt and you're going to be surrounded by enemies the last thing you want to worry about is your health so having quick fix after you kill an enemy is going to automatically heal you as soon as you finish that gunfight so that's just personal preference you can run whatever you want to for perk one now for perk two i'm using ghost obviously we want to stay stealthy we want to be undetected when they call in those uavs now for the third perk you need to run tune up this is going to help tremendously earn your stopping power rounds that much faster and why i recommend using the tune up perk all right so for the next portion of the video i'm going to be breaking down a gameplay of me using this exact same class setup and i'm going to be walking through why i'm doing what i'm doing and how i'm effectively using this exact same class setup if you guys are curious how i would personally use this in certain situations and if you came here just for the class setup consider leaving a like before you click off the video it would really show me that this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see and make sure to subscribe if you are new around here why not join turbo nation today make it official subscribe today so you never miss another new video as for the rest of you guys i will see you guys in the next portion of the video peace so we're playing here on hackney yard usually when i spawn in from this area of the map i like to approach the little dumpster area right here just to get a good vantage point and see if there are enemies coming my way and since i am using this max damage m4 setup i do want to close that gap between myself and the enemies because the accuracy on this exact setup is actually not that great from really long distance you really have to keep that in mind so i do i was able to take out that guy as he just spawned in there so now i'm up here because i want to be able to get a good vantage point of of any more enemies that might be coming in this area i do see one guy coming around this corner i'm going to be patient he just killed my teammate and i'm going to make him do the first move before i do anything i'm going to come up here for a much higher ground 
as you can see he actually knew where i was and almost took me out so it was a really good thing that i went up there i retreated just a little bit so i just want to explain this why i decided to take a peek in this area so let's play this one more time and i'm gonna pause it right here so so i just killed the enemy that was here in this area now if you look at my mini map all my teammates are on this half of the map so that's another reason why i like hackney yard is because it's a traditional three lane map as you can see my teammates are in the we'll call it the third lane of the map and i'm in the second lane so that means that this first whole lane here is most likely going to be where enemies are at so i'm just checking this area just to make sure this guy had no other teammates so that's why i go ahead and momentarily peek here as well as i let myself continue to heal now i do see that there's actually action going on over here underneath me so i make the connection i was able to get the kill unfortunately i was actually killed from behind so that's the other thing about hackney yard that you do have to take into consideration is that it's a multi-level map and you have to be aware of that at all times so i was able to take out that guy who was just camping our spawn and i'm going to pre-aim down this line of sight because this is where i'm expecting enemies to be and where i was killed last so i do see this guy he tries to pursue me and i went ahead and got a little mini flank if you will so let me explain that one more time here as i approach this corner i do know that there's enemies here for a fact and if you take a look right there there is an enemy so that's why i quickly got out of the way i faked that i was gonna go to the right so as you can see he tried to shoot me and his first instinct was to go after me now i was going to challenge this guy because i knew that i could melt him with this setup however he decided to go ahead and chase me and and switch his location up here and i was able to take him out there so so as you can see it's really all about how to outsmart your opponents and that's also something that you need to consider as well when you're playing so me going on top of this box there's a main reason for that it's because i know for a fact that this is the area in front of me where the enemies are spawning in from because they're obviously not spawning in behind me all my teammates are in this area and that's another thing that you need to pay attention to if you're trying to learn how the spawns flip and how they work and such like that so that's why i'm looking in this direction and i'm expecting enemies to come back through this way that's why i went ahead on top of this box for the good head glitch and i'm going to pre-aim down here and luckily an enemy appeared right away usually i like to wait a couple seconds if there's nothing there then i'll probably move up and, and slowly advance my way towards their spawn so as you can see there i made good use of my c4 and in that situation it was the smarter thing to do because if i were to try to engage in a gunfight there was about a 50 percent chance that that guy could have killed me now also i also did enable my stopping power rounds so this is going to give me that two shot kill and now i see on my mini map that there actually are opponents approaching me they know that i'm here in the second level of this office building so again what are we going to do we're going to outsmart the enemies and we're going to switch our location you never want to stay in the same spot always be on the move get a kill and move so here we are i'm going to go ahead and get this guy for the flank i see him pinging on that mini map that red dot is becoming closer and closer i'm listening for his footsteps he's going around the corner right there he's about to engage with my teammate and i was able to get the kill and clean up that whole entire situation so my teammate actually just died below here and that's why i'm paying attention to this area i'm gonna pre-aim here nothing teammate actually died right behind me if you guys didn't notice look at the mini map one more time all right there's my teammate he died so that's a prompt for me to go inside and investigate and there's the enemy who killed him so always be aware of your mini map the mini map literally tells you everything you need to know in this game it's very underrated and it's actually quite surprising how little most players don't even utilize that mini map so here you go that that white skull is an indicator that my teammate just died so i went ahead and investigated the situation i was able to take out the guy at the stairs so whenever there's a teammate nearby that just died i always try to make sense of where the opponents are at at all times you know how did my teammate die and then i also try to listen for sounds you know sounds is huge in this game and why you need to have the optimal settings for sound to be able to sound where, where enemies are coming in from so as you can see with these stopping power rounds this setup is absolutely amazing 
and it's indestructible. Now, here's one little detail that is going to pay off huge is that if you take a look at where my teammate is, he's got the bottom floor covered. So what I want to do now is I want to cover more ground because if I were to bunch up with my teammate here, this person that was up here who has the height advantage is going to take both of us out and that would be a very bad situation. So that's why I come up here to cover more ground and that's part of what being a good and smart teammate is. So that's why I was able to take out this guy. As you can see, he was right there. Imagine if me and my teammate were down there, he would have gotten us both killed. And that, again, is another example of why high ground actually matters in this game. Okay, so my teammates engaging in gunfight and they are now moving forward. So when my teammates are moving forward like that, that tells me that I'm able to move forward as well. But them moving up and them not dying shows that the area is clear. Because obviously if there's enemies there, my teammates are going to die. And that's a red flag for me to stay away from that situation. So let's go ahead and play it out here. I'm pre-aiming. I'm actually being shot at. So I'm going to retreat. I'm going to retreat. I'm going to get high ground here. I'm going to pre-aim into the windows. There's nothing. I'm looking around. I'm looking for where this guy is. And you know what? There was really nothing I can do in that situation. I had good positioning, good high ground, and the guy just simply outplayed me there. He played a really good game of hide and seek. So now I just called in my white phosphorus. Usually I like to call in my advanced UAV first before I call in the white phosphorus so that I know exactly where the enemies are coming in from. But unfortunately, it just didn't happen that way and I decided, you know what? It's better I just call it in now. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to try to gatekeep the enemies from advancing forward into the map and if you can see here all my teammates are in line with me or behind me so that must mean that the enemies are going to be from here basically i'm just going to wait for them to come to me you know there's a white phosphorus outside as you can see by the hit markers on my screen that means that people are actually getting hurt from it so now i'm going to slowly advance my way into their spawn as you can see my teammates are moving up here as well so that's another thing that you need to pay attention to is how I move around this map. You know, I move around this map with my teammates, but staying in my own lane to cover more ground. So now I'm traversing up here and I was able to take out that guy that was on top of that wall. And I do notice that my teammate over here on the minimap is engaging in a gunfight. So this is a really good power position as well because you do get a clear view of the enemy spawn if they're spawning from that area. So now that my teammates have actually advanced, I'm going to go ahead and pay more attention to this area because this is where some of the gunfights are happening. As you can see, I was able to take out that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and advance forward just with my teammates. So again, in this situation, if you pay attention, as my teammates are moving forward, so am I. Because this area is where the enemies are spawning in from. I'm going to try to cover my own lane and get a different vantage point to be able to cover more ground. So I'm going to come up over this box. I'm going to briefly take a look on my left and right. I don't really see one, so I'm going to go over this box as well. And I was able to take out a guy that was passing through the middle here. So now I have my UAV. I'm going to wait for it to sweep. Then I'm going to go ahead and try to engage on this guy. I'll take him out. There's another pair of enemies, as you can see right here on the minimap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to throw my C4. But unfortunately, the guy was able to kill me. And that is a prime example of why I usually prefer to use EOD. You know, it's very rare that enemies use C4s on me personally. So that's why in some certain situations, you may or may not see me using uh, EOD. Now, this was actually a really dumb situation, and this was completely entirely my fault. As you can see, I only got one round left in my magazine, and uh, I don't know what happened. I, I think I just fumbled my controller, and I wasn't able to reload as fast as I possibly could. In that situation, I probably should have switched to my secondary, which is the Renetti, and it's actually not a bad secondary to use if you're looking for a decent secondary to use so again i'm just playing a little bit more aggressive now i see that the game is about to end we've got a pretty nice sizable lead on this guy i'm just going to throw my c4 because that's where a lot of the action and the enemies are going to be at as you can see from again where my teammates are i wasn't able to see this guy he was literally just sitting in the corner here you know just waiting for people to pass by and that was the result of that you know those are just the kind of people that usually play this game they like to hide sit in corners and that's mainly the reason why i like to use strategies and i like to just try to gatekeep the opponents as much as i possibly can in their spawn to prevent those type of randomness happening uh so yeah guys that's the end of the gameplay we finished off with 20 kills and five deaths like i said it was a pretty fast gameplay but i hope that this sheds some more light 
on how exactly I know where to look, when to look, and how to tell when the spawns flip, and also as well using that minimap to my advantage to be able to notice where I need to look and directions that I need to pay more attention to. So yeah guys, if you did find this video helpful and you would like to see more multiplayer breakdowns such as this, make sure to leave a like on the video. It shows me this is the kind of content you want to continue to see. And subscribe if you're new around here. Join Turbo Nation today. I'd really love it if you would officially join the channel. Turn on notifications so you never miss another video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.